Hello students, my name is Sonia Malik. I am your coding teacher and mentor. So in this video, you will be seeing integration of for and while loops with conditional statements like if else, if, break statement, continue, switch case, etc. Right? Okay, all the best. Thank you. Hello students, I welcome you all to this new session. This is lecture number 9 and it is on conditional statements and loops part 4, right? Okay, so this session is going to be very much interesting and very much engaging. So, what we will be doing in this session? We will be doing some integration part thing, part or thing, right? Integration thing. Whose integration with whom? Integration is when you try to test two things together. This concept is very important. It is used in 98% of the coding questions that you see in your surrounding. When you will be a programmer and doing coding on various coding platforms, then you will be seeing this concept, the concepts discussed in this video very much. So please pay attention to whatever I am teaching you today, right? Okay. Integration of conditional statements, conditional statements, statements and loops. I have separately explained you about few conditional statements and loops. But in this video, you will be seeing how they both are used together. What uh, uh, conditional statements you have studied? Can you recall conditional statements that you have studied? Can you recall if, if else, and if, else, if, else. Switch case also, yes. Switch case also. Break condition also. Continue also. So these are the go-to also. But go-to we will not be discussing in this because it is not used with the loops right okay so conditional statements are these that i explained you in previous lectures and loops that we have seen is for and while loop yeah we have also seen do while loop but that i will be giving as a homework to you okay so we will be majorly discussing uh, how to integrate these conditional statements inside these loops right okay so firstly i want to teach you something right i want to teach you something okay so recall in your mind how do you used to write a for condition for loop how how you used to write a for loop how you used to write a for loop Something like this, in each, uh, defining a variable, then writing a for keyword, then creating a house by doing round parentheses, round brackets, then initializing it with some variable zero, let us say, then writing condition like suppose you are writing up to i less than equal to 10, then unary operator, right? Unary operator, then what you used to do? You used to open curly braces. Then you used to write some statements inside it. What you used to do? Statements inside it. Statements inside it. Okay. This is the first thing, right? This is the first thing. Okay. My next question to you is how you used to write if else condition. Quickly tell me. Quickly think in your mind how you used to implement if else condition. Suppose I have given you a num. Suppose I am writing a num here, right? Yeah. Suppose I am writing a num. I have defined a variable, right? I have defined a variable. Suppose it is 6. Suppose I have initialized also. How you write, how you check if this is an even or an odd integer? Quickly think in your mind like how do you check if num is equal to 6 is even number or a odd number so you what you will do is you will write if keyword if keyword bear with me for some time i'll explain you next level right if condition num 
modulo 2 equal to equal to 0. If it is divisible by 2, then it is, you write, if it is divisible by 2. No, you should write it is even number because we are checking even number. Yeah, it is divisible by 2. That's why it is even. But we have to check if a number is even or odd. This is the if condition. What is the else part? Else see out odd number because it is not divisible by 2. This is how you write if else condition to check if a number is odd or even. Okay, these two things I have already taught you in the previous uh, sessions. How to write a for loop, how to write a if else condition. Are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Right, I hope you are okay with this. Let me erase it off. I hope you are all are okay with the syntax, right, of both for loop and if else condition. Now, when I said that I have to integrate if if else conditions conditions inside for loop how do i do that do you guys have some idea how how if else condition can be put to use putting them inside for loop this is this is a programming concept that you will be using much very much so how do you do that okay let me tell you how we will be doing that Firstly, I'll be showing you how to do that. Then I'll be showing you why we are doing that, right? And the logic and the syntax of this. Don't worry. Okay. Just copy paste this. In your real life, you are not copy pasting anything, right? Like in your, uh, when you will be doing coding practical, uh, coding questions, you, uh, you will not like every time copy paste, right? You have to write by yourself. You have to write by yourself. But here I am just showing you something. I am copy pasting it by doing a control C. And I am pasting it inside this for loop. This is how you integrate a for loop and if else condition. Yeah, you have to of course make some changes. This is how you have to. This is what I meant by integrating. Write a for loop outside and inside this start a if else condition. Now you will be very curious to know how, like how it will work. I'll tell you. Okay, I know, uh, I'm sure up to here you are clear like how to integrate. I'll be coding from scratch, don't worry. This is just to show like how integration, what integration means, right? Okay, so let me erase it off and do things from scratch, right? Let me erase it off. This is not the way you will be coding. This is just to show you how integration works. How you can write if else inside for loop. Okay. Suppose I have given you a question. Pay attention. I have given you a question. Whatever I taught you just now, I'll be putting that to practical use, right? Question. Out of 1 to 10 elements, 1 to 10 elements, segregate segregate or print print which is odd or i should say which are odd and which are even this is the question for you you have to use for loop and if else loop you have to use if else inside the for loop how will you do that question how will you do this question think in your mind Okay, let me tell you this thing. Okay. First of all, pay attention to the question. He is asking you, out of 1 to 10 elements, which is odd, identify which is odd, which is even. How will you do that? Earlier, you were writing if else condition for one element. Testing 6 if it is even or it is odd. But now it is not asking you to check only one element if it is even or odd. There, there are 1 to 10 elements that you have to check for even odd condition, right? So what I'll do, I'll define a variable num. Okay? Okay. I will write a four keyword. I'm just looping over these 10 elements and showing you something. Write a four keyword and open braces. 
from where the loop is going it is going from 1 to 10 right okay num equals to 1 semicolon num less than equal to 10 because you have to go from 1 to 10 right and then semicolon num plus plus okay open curly braces then how will you write if else condition inside it you have to check for this num which is going from 1 to 10 you will write like this if num modulo 2 equal to equal to 0 same thing nothing has changed only firstly i have what i was doing i was just copy pasting that if else condition inside this for loop but now i am manually writing it to show you that it is always good to write everything by your own right to learn see out see out num is if it is divisible it means num is num is even right and del so that the next line will be printed because you are lo uh, looping over the element so otherwise if you are not using this and del it will be in single line it is appearing it will appear very bad okay else else see out num is odd do you guys have any problem with what i have written i am sure there will be no problem i just have written a for loop inside it i have used if else condition this is how i have integrated for loops with if else condition this you will be using very much right okay let me run it and show you what just happened. We will show you each and everything by dry run. Don't worry about that. Right? Okay. Let me show you how it will be working. Cool. See how beautiful the output is printed. For every element from 1 to 10, it is showing which is odd, which is even. Which is odd, which is even. 1 is odd. 2 is even, 3 is odd, 4 is even, like that so on, right? This is how you put, you use if else conditions with for loop. See, when you have to do, check something for one variable, you just write simply this, you just simply write this condition, this, uh, simply write this if else. But if you want to check for multiple elements, then you have to use this if else condition, mark my words. You have to use this if else condition inside some loop, either while loop or a for loop because of multiple elements, right? Multiple elements. Got it? Got it? Okay. I hope this syntax is clear to you. I hope this is clear to you. Now, let me show you the dry run, how it worked. Pay attention. Pay attention to it, how it worked. Okay. Pay attention to it. I'll be teaching you very nicely everything. Don't worry. The same thing is repeated. The things that I've taught you in previous sessions, the same dry run I'm doing, just pay attention. Right? Okay. So, firstly, you have defined this num. Okay. Very well. You have, see my cursor, you have initialized this num with 1. Okay. Check the condition if num is less than or equal to 10. This is you used to do now. First thing you used to initialize. Second, you used to check condition. Third, you used to enter the loop and print or do whatever it is written inside these curly braces. You you have to use this uh, do this like okay. In the for loop, I have shown you now. Like in the for loop, what I showed you. In the for loop, what I showed you. This is a simple for loop. In this, what I taught you. Uh, okay, see out something like just a demonstration, right? Okay. How how you would have tackled this earlier? How I have numbered these things, like how you, you used to do it? Firstly, initialize, then check the condition. If the condition is true, move inside the loop and do whatever is instructed you to do, and then increment. Again, initialize, then check the condition. This is the same thing that I told you, no? Firstly, you have to do this. Second, you have to check condition. Third, you have to, if the condition is true, you have to enter the loop. And fourth, you have to increment. These were the numbering that were given by me. 
when I was teaching you the for loop. Same way we will be doing here. Firstly, you have to initialize. Second, you have to check the condition. Third, you have to move inside this loop. Okay. So third, what you have to do? Third, you have to, third, you have to move inside these curly braces. Move inside these curly braces, right? Okay. So move inside this curly braces, whatever is he is saying you to do. Okay. Then fourth, increment the num, right? These were the four steps you have to do. I'll be doing the same thing. See the dry run carefully. Firstly, initialized num with 1. Checked. If num is less than equal to 10, the condition is true. Moved inside this curly braces and checked. If num is divisible by 2, yes or no. Think in your mind. Yes or no. 1 is not divisible by 2 because 1 will give you remainder as 1, not 0. So, this you will not go inside this if condition because it is not divisible you will go to the else part and it is saying num is odd so what you will print num is one one is odd one is odd this is what you have printed right second fourth step num plus plus it means num has become num has become two now then again check the condition 2 less than equal to 10 yes move inside this curly braces see my cursor right then check if 2 modulo 2 is 0 yes move inside this if loop if condition then print it 2 is even next increment this num by 3 num become 3 Check if 3 is less than or equal to 10. Yes, the condition is true. Move inside these curly braces. Move inside these curly braces. Right? And check if 3 modulo 2 is 0. No, it is not 0. Then move inside this else part. Then print 3 is code. Then again increment this num. Num becomes 4. Num becomes 4. Check the condition. If num less than or equal to 10. Yes, 4 is less than or equal to 10. Move inside this curly braces. Check if 4 modulo 2 is 0. Yes. Print whatever is written inside this. Inside this. If condition 4 is even. So on. So on you will be following this. Right. Right. I hope with these 4 dry runs you are clear with what to do with the next 5 to 10 elements. Suppose this is 10. Now, suppose this is 11. Num has incremented to 11. Suppose you have checked for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, num is not greater less than equal to 10. 11 is not less than equal to 10. Then move out of the loop. Then move out of the loop and don't go inside these curly braces and check for even odd, right? Because num has moved out of the loop from this condition even. Okay. I hope the dry run is very much clear to you. The dry run is very much clear to you guys, right? Okay. I hope the dry run is clear. So, I am very sure by now that you are clear with how to integrate for and if else condition. Like, what is the use of this using for and if else together? Right? Right? You can write inside this uh, if else. You can write any if else condition inside this for loop. It's just... Why for loop is there? Because you have to check for multiple elements, not just one. That's why if else condition is put to use inside for loop, right? You can write anything. If num modulo 5 is 0, then it, it checks for 5 like that, okay? Okay. I hope this is clear. Now, let us write the basic syntax of this. Let us write the basic syntax of this combination. So, what is the basic syntax for a for loop? Quickly, let me write. What is the basic syntax? Initialization. Initialization. Semicolon. Condition. Semicolon. Unary operators. Very good. Unary operators. Open curly braces. Statements. Statements. Right. Okay. Now, what is the basic syntax for if else? What is the basic syntax for if else? What is the basic syntax? Initializing a num. Num is already initialized. That is, i is already, uh, let's say, 
बिकॉज यू आर नॉट चेकिंग फॉर नम ना नाउ यू आर चेकिंग फॉर द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ दिस फोर लूप सो फॉर गेटिंग दैट वट इज द बेसिक सिंटेक्स इफ कंडीशन इफ कंडीशन इज ट्रू सी आउट समथिंग सी आउट समथिंग it means print statement print statement print statement right else print statement this is the basic syntax of if else this is the basic syntax of for loop this is the basic basic syntax of if else now just copy paste this and put it inside here this is the what does become what does the, this become this becomes let me erase it all okay this becomes the basic syntax of integration of for loop and if else okay i have merged merged syntax of if else with for loop that's it and i have shown you a practical example i have dry run this example for you shall we proceed if this thing is clear to you shall we proceed okay i think we shall uh, we can proceed before proceeding for next questions or next concepts i want to show you something okay so how can you put to use if else if else condition how can you segregate this if else if else condition in this for loop how can you do that let me show you a practical example suppose i have to do some calculations i am defining an integer i i am writing for loop i am writing i equal to 0 i less than equal to 10 i plus plus now i have to write if else if else if conditions and then else condition like multiple if else condition i have to write previously i was just using if and else but what about else if else if conditions in between so how do you do that if if suppose we are checking for ranges suppose we are checking if i greater than equal to 0 and i less than equal to 10 if it i falls in this range then see out a see out a something like high let's say a high and then else if same thing same thing is repeated not no complexity right if i greater than equal to 11 and i less than equal to let us say we are checking between 15 like if it falls between the range of 11 to 15 print 11 to 15 it means it is falling between this range let us write here uh, 0 to 10 it is more readable right now again a else if condition else if i greater than equal to 16 16 and j less than equal to sorry i less than equal to 20 see out 16 to 20 right else else part is the remaining ones right the remaining ones 21 to 30 there is no right uh, need to write the condition in for the else part it will assume that the uh, whatever is left put to them put them to the else part right do you know like what i have showed you by this example i have showed you how you can write if else if else if else if condition inside the for loop how can you write multiple if else condition inside the for loop this is what my main goal uh, with this program let us run it okay so uh like are you excited to see what will be the output are you excited to see what will be the output i am excited to let us run it off let us run it off cool it is giving me 0 to 10 for first 10 numbers 11 to 15 for next 5 16 to 20 for next 5 and uh, 21 to 30 for the next 10 numbers it means the expected results are equal to the actual output right okay cool so this is how you will use if else if else if conditions inside this for loop again by a for loop is used because you are checking you want to check for multiple numbers you want to check for 0 to 30 that's why right that's why uh, you have used if else conditions in inside this for loop i hope you are clear with this syntax as well right okay for by now i am making sure that you are very much comfortable with how to use for loop and if else together 
and for loop and if else if else if else together you can write as many if else if else as you want based on your requirements right based on your requirements you can write as many as for the question you can write as many else if else if right as many based on the requirement if this syntax is clear let us proceed to the next thing okay let us proceed to the next thing let me erase it off let me erase it off cool let me zoom it up okay now next is integrating integrating for loop for loop and break statement break statement this is very interesting and believe me this is also used very much it's been two years i am coding and i am using this a lot because the programming question demands that right okay so how do you integrate for loop with break statement okay how will you do that so how do you write a for loop finish uh, define some variable write a for keyword initialize it run it up to some condition do i plus plus right do a i plus plus or i minus five years based on the like i want to show you something else right i want to show you integration you know very well how to write a for condition with incrementing in nature decrementing in nature everything everything like that right okay so let us print it let us print this i end in end in let us print this i let us see what we will get cool we are getting from numbers from 0 to 10 by this for loop we are getting from numbers from 0 to 10 now uh, someone said hey sonia don't run this for loop from 0 to 10 don't run this for loop from 0 to 10 instead run it up to 4 and i told like how do i do that like how can i run a for loop which is going from 0 to 10 how can i run it uh, it from 0 to 4 he said that he said that when you get a 5 break it break out of the loop when you get a 5 break out of the loop so what i will do i'll write a if condition right if i equals to equals to 5 it means i'm checking this i if it is equals to 5 break it means break out of the loop see earlier you used to break out of the for loop when the condition is false when this this for loop condition turns out to be false but now you're breaking out of the loop because of this break statement this is how you integrate for loop and break statement together right let us run it off and then dry run it oh nothing is printed oh because i have not printed anything yeah let me print something let me print i only right see what happened oh what i was doing yeah it's zero one two three four five right it's zero one two three four five do you know like why this happened why this happened like why five gets printed i don't want to print five i want to break when loop reaches five but five also got printed I already told you the reason because firstly you are printing then you are checking the condition my students you are printing first and then checking the condition that's why 5 got printed see how it worked when you your i is 0 you check condition you moved inside okay you moved inside you printed this 0 then checked if 0 is 5 okay then suppose your uh, i is 5 suppose your this i becomes 5 by looping over and again and again suppose i is 5 i is 5 let me write it here i is 5 i equals to 5 suppose you have tested for 0 1 2 3 4 uh, 4 and now you you reached 5 i equals to 5 5 less than equal to 10 yes move inside the parenthesis move inside these curly braces print that 5 this will print this will initially initially print that five first right 
and then check for condition if 5 equal to 5 and then break out of the loop. This is the reason why 5 got printed because you printed it first and then checked the condition. So what you have to do? What you have to do in order to remove that 5 from your list? What you have to do? Come on. Think in your minds what you have to do. You have to check the condition first, then print it. Check the condition first, then print it. It means write the print statement after you have checked the condition. Now it will work. Now how, how it will work in terms of 5? Suppose I reaches 5. It checked for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It, it reaches 5. How it will work now? Can you think? Okay i equals to 5, i less than equal to 10, 5 less than equal to 10, move inside these curly bracket, brackets and che check. If 5 equals to 5, yes, 5 is equal to 5, break out of the loop. When you break out of this loop, this condition, this statement is not called because on this if block, you have, you have moved out of the loop. Here you have moved out of the loop, right? It means before coming to this I print statement, you have moved out of the loop. That's why I will not get printed if you first check the condition, then print the statement. Let us see. Oh, this is 5. Sorry. Uh, this is 5. In When I was, uh, uh, while I was explaining you, I changed it to 5. Right now, see only zero to four gets printed. Why? Because firstly I checked the condition, then I printed. Okay, that's why five is not printed. Right? Clear with this? Clear with the fact that how for loop is used with break statement? Okay. Now, can you tell how uh, there is another statement that is continue? How continue can be used? How continue statement can be used with this for loop? Quickly tell me, quickly tell me. Think in your minds, think in your minds. How it is used? If just replace this break with continue. Just replace this break with continue. And let us check the output. This is giving us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I hope you are clear with what continue statement do, do. It jumps. Whatever element is mentioned, if you have said that i is equal to 5, continue. It means don't consider 5 while printing numbers from 0 to 10. What does it do? What does continue statement do? It will print 0, it will print 1, it will print 2, 3, 4. But when it reaches 5, it says... If i is equal to 5, if 5 equals to 5, continue. It means don't print it. Jump to the, directly don't print it. Jump to 6 directly. So that's why 6 got printed, right? 6 got printed. But suppose if you want to jump from multiple elements, like you want to, suppose, you want to uh, avoid 4, you want to avoid 5, you want to avoid 7, and you want to avoid 10. Okay, suppose printing numbers from 0 to 10, you, wa you want to avoid these numbers. What do you want to avoid? You want to avoid 4, you want to avoid 5, you want to avoid 7 and 10. How do you do this? You will write multiple OR conditions like if i equal to 5, if i equals to 4, OR if i equals to equals to 7, OR or means if it comes, if it comes, if any one of these comes, avoid them because we don't want to print them, right? This is how you write multiple or and end conditions, right? Okay, so let us print it out, what it will give you. Woo, cool, it is giving you the pattern 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 9. Let us check. 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 9. Yes, exactly, it is giving the expected results, right? This is how you avoid multiple values. This is what continue statement do. Whatever number you tell it to avoid, it will avoid that. Avoid printing that, executing that, right? Okay. Okay. So I hope by now you are very much clear like how to use loop, for loop and continue statement together. For loop and continue statement together, right? 
let me erase it off by now i have taught you how to use if else inside a for loop if else if else inside a for loop break statement inside a for loop and continue statement inside a for loop now what is left quickly tell me what is left this switch case is left exactly my point exactly this switch case is left this switch case is left let us see this also so what syntax i told you about switch case statement quickly remember that recall recall which syntax i told you that this is a syntax for switch case we performed some important calculations as well remember in the previous sessions write switch case statement then i'll show you how you can integrate this with for loop suppose you want to again that age factor haunted house wala remember the game okay suggestion game let us draw design that suggestion game again int age define a variable ask the user to enter the age clear yes take the input age take the input age then switch keyword then open this round uh, braces write the variable name this is what i told you now open curly braces and write cases case one if the age is one what do you suggest it what do you suggest the people with age one go baby sleep because one year age kid is a baby only right you will recommend him to sleep and you know like why this break statement is put because one suggestion for one person otherwise the user will get confused if you're not writing break the all the statements below this will get printed right okay i hope you remember the switch case statement case 17 see out you are not allowed to go to haunted house in the fun fair right break it right what will you suggest for case 24 age group 24 not age group basically age of people like okay what will you suggest go watch a movie right and last case what will you suggest for 50 years age people see out you can suggest anything this is the thing which i am writing myself randomly random basis right go to park and do exercise there exercise there although it is very cold we are in winter season but still it is a it is a programming uh, example only right don't take it seriously default by default what do you mean by default it means if none of these cases are followed then default what is written in default it will be printed don't do anything don't do anything don't do anything you are not compulsory to write break now see why we are not writing break with this default because because this is the last case there is no, no statements below it that can get printed if you are not like if we are avoiding break here then unnecessarily these conditions will be printed if we are avoiding break here then obviously these conditions will also get printed but as you can see default is the last case there is no line uh, below it that's why there is not a compulsion to write a break if you are writing it it is all uh, okay if you are not writing it it is, it is okay too because there is there are no lines to get executed that's why there is not compulsion for the last statement right okay so let us run this code first then i'll uh, make you aware like how for loop can be used here okay i enter 23 don't do anything because let us see yeah my age was 23 and 23 was nowhere so it uh, uh, this game recommended me default case don't do anything any problem with the switch case uh, logic any problem okay now you will be like okay now teacher how we can uh, how we can integrate a for loop with the switch case okay how we will do that how we will do that see carefully by doing this you are just asking age for one time 
it means this game you are asking for one time this is just for one variable what about if you want to ask for multiple ages what if you want to ask for multiple ages here you are asking for just one age but if you want to ask for people from ages like if you want to ask from people uh, from 1 to 50 years of age 50 years of age now what you have to do again and again you have to again and again you have to run this code by pressing f11 see see this carefully let me comment it off off again and again a user will uh, you will press f11 then uh, you will enter the age then execute the code then again you will press f11 for the second uh, second uh, person you will again enter the age and press enter right right okay but what if you want to uh, continuously check for 1 to 50 years of age multiple people multiple multiple ages not just one then you have to put this whole code inside a loop suppose you want to check for 1 to 50 age of people how do you do this how do you do this tell me quickly how will you do this implement a for loop for age starting from 1 age going up to less than equal to 50 age plus plus open the curly braces put this code inside this for loop copy paste it and put it inside this for loop and comment out this or delete it otherwise it will cause confusion Thoda, like i can give some spaces for uh, like it should appear very much neat and clean okay what does what just i did i just wrote a for loop because i wanted to check for age group 1 to 50 and then i have put the switch case inside this for loop so that continuously it will ask for 1 to 50 don't uh, don't uh, it is not required to run again and again the program by pressing f11 from your laptop's keyboard and then uh, again and again checking now let me run this code and see what will happen enter the age one it shows go baby oh it is printing this in one line it is looking rubbish right so let me make a space here this you have to see with the programming with the practice you will know like where to put space where to put next line right okay oh what just happened okay oh sorry for this i have opened multiple uh, give me one second as i have opened multiple tabs multiple output tabs that's why i think it has a limit yeah now it is fine now it is fine now again and again it is not like i have to press f11 then go to this uh, come to this program enter an age and then uh, go back and then again f11 it is continuously asking what is your age 12 don't do anything what is your age one go baby sleep what is your age 50 go baby sleep no it is go to park and exercise there right okay okay why okay now you will be asking like why uh it executed because you have filled the last stage you have filled the last stage what is your range what is your range from 1 to 50 from 1 to 50 you entered the age 50 and it got executed because your condition word was age should be less than equal to 50 and i have i have given i have given 50 that's why it goes out right okay one two three four like that oh it is again executed because i have given larger number see again one two three four five six no it's it is again greater 7 8 10 13 this it is continuously asking me till my age is in range 1 to 50 it is continuously asking me and giving me suggestions don't do anything don't do anything like that right so by putting this switch case inside this for loop i am running this game for multiple times 
whenever you have to perform some action if else switch case break continue whatever it is multiple times and you have to put this content inside the for loops either a for loop or a while loop it's your choice right i have shown you in this class i have shown you about for loop now you will be asking what is the homework for today you will be asking what is the homework for today let me raise it off homework for today is homework whatever i did with for loop and conditionals you have to do the same with while loop this is your homework whatever i did with for loop you have to perform the same actions with while loop use while if else use while if use while if else uh, if else if else like the else if else if like that use while with switch case use while with break use while with continue you have so much to do right same syntax same syntax nothing changed nothing changed right so the basic hint i would like to give you so what how you will use what is the syntax of this while loop defining something writing condition i am uh, telling you some hint like how can you do that okay uh, statement statement this is the syntax for this is the basic syntax for syntax for while loop right what is the syntax of if else condition note it down so that you can practice it yourself print something something else print something then how will you integrate this while in for copy paste this inside this while in actual life you are not copy pasting writing manually but in order to save time and uh, already i have taught you this concept from brute force with for loop that's why i have just copy paste right this is the way i want to tell you this is a syntax of how you will you can use while and if else conditions for else if else if conditions just do like this no changes do like this do like this no changes do like this right everything i have shown you right i hope you can practice all by now yourself and also i want to show you the switch case wala part let me show you the switch case wala part if possible let me control that it okay it's just to show like how can you do the homework so oh, cool i got it okay now how will you use basic syntax to use while loop with the uh, while loop with this uh, switch case just write a condition here you replace this for with while keyword and do a uh, suppose you're writing some age less than equal to something 20 then do a age plus plus right this is a basic syntax of writing integrating while loop and switch case okay can you do it yourself okay now what is the syntax of using break inside this while loop if some condition if some condition break this is how you use break and while loop together right writing this break just replace this for with while keyword and write accordingly as per while loop how do you do continue just replace this break with continue this is the syntax of integrating while and continue statement right so in a 2 to 3 minutes i have shown you how can you do your homework how can you use while loop with these okay so uh, the topic the last topic for today is how to deal with infinite loops infinite loops like the like have you ever thought like what if there are infinite loops what if there have we have not written any condition to stop it to increment it something like that so i want to show you some infinite loops and how to control them right so this is the last topic for today okay so first is for infinite loop for infinite loop this i'll show you with while also don't worry okay for infinite loop infinite loop you have initialized some variable you have written a for keyword what is an what is an ideal for loop according to you tell me quickly 
tell me quickly guys what is an ideal for loop according to you this is the ideal do you know what i'm saying what do you uh, what do i mean by ideal ideal means the perfect ideal means the perfect for loop for you which worked very nicely like which works very nicely what is the perfect for loop for you this is this it will run fine let us run it off let us run it off right okay i have to again do this sometimes it is giving me bad impression that again and again i have to cross check this cross this output yeah it is giving me numbers from 0 to 10 this is the ideal for loop this i have taught you multiple times by now multiple times now what do you mean by infinite loop okay let us see the importance now you will be realizing the importance of these parts of the house whatever will live in this house initialization what if in uh, ask this question to yourself what if initialization is not there what if condition is not there what if unary operators are not there what if print statement is not there okay print statement is we can think about later because uh, if you're not printing anything the output will look up, uh, will look, uh, will look like blank or empty something like that right okay it will look like that but what if initialization is not there let us test this first suppose i'm not initializing with anything and this i have covered in the previous session what if you're not giving i anything it will say it with me say it with me it will automatically take it zero we discussed now if i and j are not given i is initialized to zero and j is by default automatic initialized to one so what if initialization is not there i will be automatically initialized from zero there is not any issue with this no infinite loop is formed it is printed the element it has printed the elements from zero to ten right from zero to ten okay so we have seen that if we are not giving any initialization we are facing no problem then what is the problem uh, part that is giving us problem now suppose if you are not writing this condition i less than equal to 10 if this house is empty in your colony it happens now uh, if you're if in your colony there are 10 houses in a lane some houses are empty for for rent purposes rent purposes so i told you from the first day now that there are three uh, parts of this house one part is initialization another part is condition another part is unary operator so what if there is not any condition let us see what will happen let us see oh it is giving us infinite loop see see how it is running it is not stopping man where it will stop it will not stop anywhere it will run continuously it will not stop any, any, anywhere maybe it will stop up to the range of that uh, integer data type i told you not 21477 something 10 to the power 9 it will stop there it will run for 30 minutes i think continuously or it will not stop go beyond but we are not having that much time to look at it and see where it will stop right shall we proceed right so i have shown you that if you're not writing okay you have written where to start and how much jump to take but you're not mentioning where to stop at so that's why it is not stopping it is going continuously do you know what we call such loops we call it infinite for loops yes infinite for loops we call it as infinite for loops right okay let us proceed further so we have realized the importance of this infinite for loop how will you tackle this how will you tackle this you will write if condition to break it you will write if i reaches 100 break it this is how you prevent going it uh, to become infinite loop now it will not infinite it will be not infinite it will stop at 100 see see it stopped at oh it stopped at 99 right it stopped at 99 yeah it stopped at 19 because at 100 i'm breaking i'm breaking it first then printing that's why 100 is not printed this is how you stop infinite loop by writing a break condition by rukja stop here right like that stop running infinite times stop break okay let me erase it off now okay we have realized the importance of this condition where to stop now this house importance we have initialized what if we are not incrementing it 
what if we are not incrementing it what will happen see carefully it is very important to notice see it is giving 0 0 0 0 0 it is also infinite if you're not mentioning if you're not jumping it uh, by one element by plus plus it is not doing anything it is doing 0 0 0 it will go it will go forever for 30 years of your life it will go for 50 70 years it will go when you open a laptop after 70 years now it will still like this okay uh, that's the funny fact but it is continuous right so let us erase it off so now you cannot write break condition in this case why because your element are not proceeding further they are zero 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 yeah you can write like this if i equal to zero break it means it will break on the first zero it will not print anything right but that is not exactly uh, that is not very much curious uh, like very exciting how will you do how will you approach this problem right how will you do this okay uh, uh, there is nothing to do well in this case i just showed you like what is the importance of this i plus plus okay when uh, like uh, let me show you the dry run how so many zero zeros got printed let me show you the dry run why just it happened zero 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 why it, it happened you defined a variable i, you initialize it with 0, you checked the condition i less than equal to 0, which means 0 less than equal to, sorry, i less than equal to 10. It means 0 less than equal to 10. You moved inside this, you printed this 0 and you have gone here. But here no increment is there. It means it is still 0. Still you are checking 0 less than equal to 0. Still you are printing this 0 again still you are printing this zero then again no in, no incrementing it is still zero it is still checked it is less than equal to 10 it is still printed this way so many zeros in the infinite manner go printed this is the importance of this increment operator unary increment operator right this is what do i mean by infinite loop so let me raise it off now how uh, how while loop will behave infinitely See, while loop will behave infinitely in a different manner, not just by not uh, writing, missing the condition. See this, see this. If I'll miss a uh, condition here and uh, write this C out I, it will not give you infinite loop. It will give you error instead because this while loop behaves differently than for loop in this, uh, for this scenario. See, the error is coming. They are saying you have not written inside this condition. But when in for loop I missed that condition, they are not giving the error, but they are printing the infinite loop. But here, because there is a different way in which while loop behaves like infinite while loop, this is not the way. So what is the way? Tell me, teacher, what is the way? Okay. That loop is called as, that loop is called as while true loop, while true loop while true loop this loop is called as while infinite loop is called as while true loop how you will write it you will write a keyword while you will write true true pure i have written sorry see out 100 what does it mean see the see what it will give you see what it will give you see so many hundreds why in the why the whole screen is occupied because i have not given an endl if i give an endl endl let us see what will happen okay infinite loop loop is running that's why it is causing problem it means the previous output screen is not executed it is not completed and you have again started it running now see how many hundred uh, I get. You can not even count. It will, uh, after 70 years of your age, it will be the same. Like, okay. This is the funny fact. But yeah, I mean to say that it will not stop. Because, do you know like what this, okay, let me raise it off. Otherwise, it will still goes on. Now, do you know like why this, uh, this kind of while loop uh, resulted in an infinite while loop? Because you have written while true. It means, jab tak such hai. Yeah, this is not mentioned what such hai, but while true. While true, jab tak condition true hai. Like, while true is there, keep on executing this 100, 100, 100 again and again, right? Okay. 
keep on executing this now another way is you initialize something suppose you initialize something i with zero you know now that in while loop initialization defining happens at the same time and you wrote a while true and you print this c out i let us see what will happen and then and you write a i plus plus it will again it will give you numbers from 0 1 2 3 so on like that see the infinite loop is there it is running from 0 to infinite times it will go i don't know where it will stop it will go beyond its capacity or it will stop but we will not waste time in seeing where it will stop personally you can try this code and see where it will work uh, stop i have tried that in my time also to see like where it will stop but uh, but uh, i don't remember right <laughs> okay now what is the way to stop this while loop again write if condition because it can do this if i equal to equal to 90 break this is how you break out of the condition it is breaked at 89 why because why not 90 because i have i have written the condition before and then printed okay if i would have printed first and then check the condition then 90 would have printed do you want to see it do you want to see it okay let me show you this let me copy it let me paste it and show you what do i mean now c90 will get printed because you have printed first and then check the condition right okay 90 is got printed like see the last uh, number right okay so this is all about this is all about the infinite loops i hope you have gained much knowledge from this lecture so okay uh, the next session will be on nested for and while loops that was the last that will be the last part of conditional statements and loops right okay so practice yourself do the homework practice multiple questions yourself and play in whatever manner you can play with this for and while loops putting if else condition inside outside whatever it is whatever you do want to do man right oh you can also use uh, you can also use that uh, one time one second it is not compulsory that every time that uh, inside if uh, uh, inside for that if else will be used you can also do like this that you can also i tell you now like i told you you can play anyways you can also write this so uh, int num suppose this is there suppose this is there int num is equal to uh, int num see in suppose i'm taking input from user and if i'm saying if num is num equals to equals to 10 then run a for loop from i to uh, uh from i is equal to zero to i less than equal to 180 and then i plus plus see i have used this uh okay c out i else else let us see if it will work or not else copy this for condition for loop sorry and print it from uh, let us say uh, 200 to 400 let us say this so that we can differentiate like which loop ran right okay let us run it off it will work or not yeah it will work there's no fault in this okay let us suppose i fill 23 see it is giving 200 to 400 numbers it means what i tested if the number is 23 if the number is 10 then this loop and otherwise this loop this loop has got printed so like whatever uh, this is the same thing that i am saying that don't just confine yourself with whatever i teach practice yourself things you can do anything with programming see uh um in this beginning i explained you how to put this if else condition inside this for loop and now i told that how to put this for loop inside this if else right it can work while loop also it can work switch case this for loop can work but this is rarely used why i have not pay, uh, paid uh, much attention to this concept because it is very rarely used very rarely used that's why it is it is two percent or three percent used in programming that's why but uh, my main goal is to teach you that uh, this is also you can do experiment whatever in whatever way you can do with programming right okay so i hope you all are clear with the what is being taught to you in this session so see you in the next session 
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम ऑल द बेस्ट